Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about AI. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what do you think about GPT-3? And that some people are scared that machine learning algorithms and AI and so forth are going to steal their jobs. And the short answer is that I think that it is absolutely inevitable that it will happen, but I believe that there's only a small portion of people who are going to uh, to see this threat uh, happen early on, and then it's going to work its way its way f uh, further and further into uh, the industry. Let me explain. So, to just summer, uh, just I think we need to touch on what the GP3 model is, and uh, it's a it's a machine learning model that has been trained on uh, analyzing text in different conversations on the web between people. In other words, you might know about Cleverbot or similar systems where it's a, it's a chat, it's in es it becomes in essence a chatbot where you post a question of some sort and it's going to give you a response. And the way it does this is basically that it analyzes like. I think that I read in an article that this one has like 175 billion responses or something like that. It's like a ludicrous amount of data we're talking here and a ludicrous amount of conversations that has taken place. And so what the model does is that it looks at your input and analyzes the text and looks what is the likely response to give here. Now that is not true AI and that's the thing that uh, uh, people who may not be so technical may not understand. This uh, the system guys it's not thinking it's not doing a process is literally a, you can think of it as this it's more advanced than this but it's basically a, fun a function that takes an input formats the data cleans it up a little bit because some words needs to be cleaned up uh, when you're dealing with text and then has a massive hash table or something like that where it's like oh there is a this thing fits in this pocket and we have a response that is very likely to be the thing that the user is looking for that's the sort of system that we're talking about it's more advanced than that but that's the basic idea now what I believe about this is that this is it's not this coming as news to me uh, that some people might be a little bit afraid of this because this is the first step towards us automating away a what I like to call a well it's practically a redundant uh, profession or a redundant industry it's very similar I, we, I had a very similar experience when I was a teenager and I was working at my local supermarket in my hometown and so when back in those days there was the, the we were just getting our first the cash registers that had self-scanning systems where each of the like the customer I mean this is common practice today like most of the bigger supermarkets at least here in my country have a self-scanning service where you don't have to have a clerk or sit stand and wait in line you just take a scan and you scan all the things and you go and like pay for the thing and so a lot of my coworkers felt that this was a very cool thing and it was very innovative and so forth and I stated yeah but hope I hope that you realize as well that the the this this is like first day rollout and the end goal of this system is to make you redundant uh, and I think that this is the same thing and I believe that this is a very good thing because there is something that's very powerful that will come from us adopting this sort of uh, these sorts of models and becoming more intimate with uh, text analy analyzing text and conversations and actually having machine learning uh, like NLP and things of this uh, as part of our systems. I think this is a very, very good and very close adjacent next step. The reason why I believe that is because right now, I think that you're going to find it hard to find anything, and I mean anything, that bigger com companies want than an effective chatbot system. That is probably the sexiest thing, among at least the sexiest things that you can work on today. If you're a small startup or something like that, every single company that I know of wants a automated chatbot system that can converse and perform different tasks on behalf of the users without having to have a physical person deal with it because it's very costly to hire all of these support staff that doesn't technically help your business grow. They're just quote unquote maintaining your customer satisfaction this is a very important thing but even the people who are working with customer satisfaction has like 
an enormous amount of stuff to do. So if you can automate away like common things, I mean, we, even at my tiny little company that I work uh, at these days, we have this. We have machine learning, uh, learning algorithms that analyze email responses from different people to just see if they said yes or no and like just to make sure that things are going as they're supposed to because there's so much work for our support staff, right? So this thing is a very hot area right now and I believe that this is the first like if you're gonna be afraid that you're gonna lose your job if you're working as support staff I'm not saying that you're gonna lose your job I'm just saying that you might see these sorts of things inter be introduced fairly or if, like, by you might be one of the first people who notice this and I think this is a very good thing because these models I mean the problem with GP3 is that this is a gener general model, and that's the that's the key problem with this. That's why the, I think that like this is not a solved problem, and it's going to take a while before this actually gets in, uh, adopted into mainstream programming. Because unfortunately, even though this is a very cool experiment and these models are very useful, and I think that they are critical, uh, the w the money isn't there. Uh, until you can actually give something to a company which allows them to do things with their users and that's the problem with these machine learning uh, models that the, if you don't train them on the right data they're useless it's you like you can't take this model and give it to a company and have the have it run uh, customer support for you because it's not going to be able to answer the customer because the customer is not going to have a conversation that has most likely existed unless you might be I don't know that's actually an interesting thought. If you were a company such as Subway or I don't know, one of the big brands that have Twitter accounts, you might actually be able to use it if the data is there. But I think that even so, this model is very, very useful because if you have like open source projects or groups that actually create these sorts of models, like these more generic models that get really good at just normal conversations between people, well, it, then you could use those as a base layer in more specific models that a company can train such as a medical company or a law firm or something like that and if you think about that that's what gets me excited about this that's why I think it's, this is so cool and because if you have a very nice good foundation layer that makes it very accessible for programmers to build a chat system or something like that well if they can do that with and make it like a really high quality thing, it's kind of like using a framework. Like you have something as a base layer that makes the gap between building the whole thing from your, for yourself and, and so forth like much smaller, so you can make it in a feasible amount of time. Well, then more people will add this into their their into circulation into their own stacks. And what I think that's really powerful is because I would be, I'm I think that the next step after we see more of this coming into our workflows we will see more companies train models and after a while the some of these companies are going to give give away their models as you can imagine a lot of what a doctor like these uh, like health centers do and uh, law firms and so forth it's uh, it's go it's getting down to just answering questions that people don't know how to answer it's uh, it's like the next version of a search engine you don't want to know something you don't understand it and you want someone to explain it to you a human doesn't have to do this necessarily you can train a computer to uh, give you these answers and you can make it do much more cooler things than just answering questions but I think that that's the first natural step and if then a lot of companies train their own models such as health centers and so forth well most people like a lot of people are then hopefully going to be open to giving away those models imagine yourself if there was like a because we have public APIs right like you know today that you can go and like gather data from nice companies and organizations that give away data that you can then use in your application imagine if you could do the same thing with trained models so you could create a chatbot that is trained on I don't know rest different restaurants that know about allergies or things like that or you have models that know how to answer questions about health or law and stuff like that that's like the next level for me I think that that's where like a lot of this is heading and I think that the the next generation of programmers and applications are going to go and create these ma marketplaces where we can create now even more powerful systems and before you know it we have built Skynet and then uh, everything <coughs> starts all over again so what I want you to take away from this is that I think that initiatives such as GPT-3 is very, are very cool. I think it's very cool in general with NLP and language processing and stuff, machine learning in general because I believe that this is where everything is heading and I believe that there's like there's no point in fighting it. Fighting it. It's the same, same thing I said to my coworkers about the self cash register. 
it's you 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 can't kill progress it's going to happen because this is a very cost effective thing to do but you don't have to, to be stressed about it i mean today it's like 10 at least 10 years later or 11 or 15 years or something like that and we still haven't gotten to a point at least here in my country where like there are no people working in the cash registers or no clerks we still have we have both so it takes a lot of time and in that time i hope that you realize that your survival is not based on you just deciding that i want to work in the way we used to do in the back good old days because then you're basically retired the the, the key to your survival is to get with the times it's always going to be that way it's going to continue that way for forever but with this change comes something that is even more powerful and that is that we are now investing in a much more advanced form of tooling that I truly believe will give the next generation of programmers the opportunity to create tools that are so powerful that we're actually getting like very very close to the singularity if that's even going to happen but uh, Overall, I think that this is a very positive thing, and I'm very excited to see what's going to happen in a few years when more specific models that know very specific areas of expertise are trained and can be used. Because if you think about it, a lot of the work that we humans do can be solved by just going through a checklist and getting answers to questions. You can be like many different professions and work in many different areas by just knowing what to do. And if you have a computer next to you where you can just say, this is the situation, what should I do? do and have it tell you that that's a very very powerful concept have a great day